Uh, so continuing on what we were talking about earlier about how orth multiplication by orthogonal matrix doesn't change uh, the angles or distances, how, do, how can we generalize that principle a little bit? And so if we take what's known as an, uh, well, let's actually define what's known as an isometry or sometimes called a rigid motion. Now, isometry is a function on our vector space Fn to Fn, such that the distance between the vectors Tx and Ty is the same as the original vectors x and y. So isometries don't change distances between vectors. It preserves distance. Preserves distance. Distances whatsoever between vectors. Now, the, the reason we take this, I, the, I mean, if you look at the word isometry itself, it comes from the Greek. Uh, it would translate as same measure, same distance. And so that's that's exactly what isometry does. It preserves the distances between vectors. It's like, hey, if you take what we just talked about a moment ago, multiplication by orthogonal matrices preserve differences. Oh, okay. Multiplication by an orthogonal matrix is an example of an isometry. Well, what else? Uh, what else can kind of preserve distances? Because these isometries are these these motions that are, are these transformations of the plane or, or your vector space that don't distort anything. They don't distort the shape, the angles, the distances. All of that's nice and preserved here. All right. So orthogonal matrices preserve uh, distances. What else does? Well, another example of an isometry would be that of a translation. So take a vector B inside your vector space, and the translation associated to the vector B is a map from Fn to Fn such that X maps to X plus B. Uh, geometrically, what's happening is the following. You have your vector X right here, and you have some translation vector B, which you just add to it. And so you're just going to translate X right here. Oops. 2x plus b. So it just has the effect that if you take any point in the plane, it'll translate that point to some new point by this constant factor b. Uh, this, is, this is what we mean by translation here. Now, I should mention that translation vectors are not linear transformations. Uh, let's, uh, oops, too far. Uh, let's make a comment about that for a second. So a translation... A translation is not is not linear, uh, at least in general. I think I was going to talk about that later, but I'll just make the comment here. Translations are not linear uh, when your translation vector B is not zero. And the issue is that if you take your translation of the zero vector, this will map to zero plus B, which of course is equal to B which is not zero in this case. Every linear transformation maps zero to zero. Translations don't do that. So this gives us a translation that's different than uh, linear transformations, but these are gonna be isometries. Uh, how do we know that? Well, the idea is basically the following. If you take the distance between two vectors, x and y, using this map, you wanna take, this is the distance, the length of x minus y right here, but on the other hand, if you take the distance of Tx and Ty, this is going to be the distance between x plus b minus y plus b. And you can see that x plus b minus y plus b, the b's are going to cancel out. The translation cancels out, and you get the same thing. So translations are isometries. Uh, multiplication by orthogonal ma matrix is an isometry. And we're going to see at the end of this lecture that essentially every isometry is just a combination of these two principles. So before we do that, let's talk about uh, the, the titular topic for today, the affine transformations. So we can generalize the notion of a linear transformation in the following way. We have a map T from a vector space Fn to a vector space Fm. This is a map, and we call it an affine map not a linear, a linear transformation, an affine transformation. If there exists a matrix A, this is going to be an M by N matrix. Uh, this will correspond to these numbers right here. And so we have an M by N matrix, and we have a vector B, which lives in Fm, 
which is the codomain of this map, so that the function tx will map you to the vector ax plus b. So x is a vector in fn. Multiplication by a will translate this into a vector. It'll go from fn to fm. And then you can add a vector from fm to that. And this gives you, this gives you a transformation. So you get ax plus b. Now we've seen that linear maps, linear maps send x to ax plus, or a, a, just ax there, right? Where a is the standard matrix of the transformation, linear transformation. So these affine transformations are essentially doing the same thing. How do you get something affine? You just add on this extra translation vector right there. And so in general, uh, your affine map won't be linear if the translation's non-zero, but an affine map is linear if and only if the translation's zero. And so I want to take a look at an example of this right here. So let's consider the affine transformation associated, uh, the affine map from R3 to R3 associated to this matrix and this translation vector right here. So if we take as an example T of, uh, what do we want to do? Let's take... I have an example here somewhere. Uh, let's take the image of two, zero, negative one. So what this means is we're gonna take this matrix right here, times it by the vector two, zero, negative one, and we're gonna add to it uh, the vector we have right here So, and so what happens? Well, if we go through our finger multiplication, three negative one, one times two, zero, negative one, we will get the vector, what do we get? We get six plus zero minus one. Uh, if we do it the second row, we're gonna get negative six plus zero plus zero. And if we do the third row, we're gonna get 12 plus zero minus two. We add to this. Uh, the vector one, two, three. If we simplify the matrix product, we should get five, negative six, and 10. Add to that the vector one, two, three, like so. And then the final arithmetic here, uh, combine the two vectors there, you're gonna get six, negative four, and 13. Right? And so the image of this affine map will be 6, negative 4, 13. Just a, just a basic calculation one can go through in this piece. So calculation of images just adds an extra step of translation. All right? Well, another thing is, is the vector. Is the vector, let's take the vector 2, negative 2, 4. Is this inside the image of T? Because even though we're talking about affine transformation now, the notion of image makes sense for any, any function. Is it in the image there? And so what that means is we have to solve the equation. Oops. We have to solve the equation ax plus b equals this vector 2, negative 2, 4. Can we solve this? Well, if you subtract... If you subtract the translation vector from both sides, be aware this comes down to the matrix equation AX equals 2, negative 2, 4 minus B. Or more specifically, we have to work with, we have to do the augment, or we have to rubber reduce the augmented matrix 3. 3, negative 1, 1, augment uh, 2 minus 1 is a 1. Then we, so, so the coefficient matrix is just going to be A right here. Let me just copy that real quick. So we already did the first row. We get negative 3, 2, and 0. And then finally we get 6, negative 3, and 2. And so then here in the, in the final column, you're just taking 
the target vector subtracting from a b. Negative 2 minus 2 is a negative 4, and three, 4 minus 3 is a 1. So really, it just comes down to row reducing this matrix right here, which if we do that, you'll find out that the matrix A is actually non-singular. Row reduces to the identity. And then what you end up with is 2, 1, negative 4. And so this matrix right here, row reduces. And so we see that, yes, uh, the answer to the original question is yes, we do have that our vector y, so y is in the image of t. And we can see this because t of 2, 1, negative 4 equals y. And I'll let you verify, I'll let you verify that fact right there. Uh, pause the video if you need to, to double check the multiplication there. And so we can use a system of linear equations to help us answer questions about, well, is this thing inside of the image? Um, kernels don't really make much sense in model of transformations because the kernel is the set of all vectors that maps to zero. And because of the translation map, well, there's really just gonna be one thing that maps to zero, basically. Um, I mean, one could talk about it, but like with this situation right here, it kind of came down to the matrix A, right? You're solving that equation AX equals something, the original vector Y minus B. You have to solve that system. If you're asking questions about like one to one, is it one to one? Well, since you have to solve this system, A augment Y minus B, if it's one to one, it really depends on the matrix A right here. And if you're curious, is it onto? Again, it has, it depends entirely on this matrix A right here. Uh, that is this system of equations. So much like how we did it with um, with linear transformations earlier in this course here, um, if we want to show if it's onto, let y be a generic vector, subtract from it b right here, and solve the system of equations, which really, it's not going to matter. It depends entirely on a right here. This matrix will be onto, it'll be onto if we have a pivot in every single row. Pivot in, uh, in every row of A. That'll make the affine transformation onto. What about one to one? Well, this this it'll be one to one. Will there be multiple solutions? It'll have multiple solutions only if there are piv non pivot columns in the matrix here, because the non pivot columns give us free variables. And so this this affine transformation will be one to one if it has a pivot in every column. So you can see with this matrix A, which is non-singular, this associated affine transformation will be both one-to-one -one and onto because they have a pivot in every row and column there. So in some respect, um, affine transformations are very much like linear transformations, right? You, you take X and you map to AX plus B. This will be linear if and only if uh, the vector the translation vector B is non, it'll be linear if that translation vector is zero. Now it turns out you can extend, you can extend your space Fn into the larger space Fn plus one. And with this perspective, every affine transformation can be visualized as a linear transformation in a larger vector space. And the idea is the following, Take the system, the augmented matrix, you can take A augment B, where A is your coefficient matrix uh, for the affine transformation, B is your translation vector. And then you're gonna add an extra row. So this thing right here, uh, you're gonna add extra row to it. And so on the coefficient side, you're just gonna add a bunch of zeros, zero, 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 zero. And then on the augmented side, you're just gonna add a one here. And so if A, if A is a M by N matrix, this one down here, we have an extra row now. So you're gonna get M by, sorry, M plus one by N matrix. And then there's an extra column to that. And so if you take this matrix and you multiply it by the vector X one, so you just add this extra one there. 
by matrix multiplication, you'll end up with AX plus B times one, which is B. And then you'll just get, if you do the second row, you'll end up with just a one there. So there's this extra one that sticks on the bottom for the whole time, but you can actually do uh, affine transformations as matrix multiplication. You just need this extra row that kind of acts as a placeholder here. And so because of that, this matrix right here, this augmented matrix, excuse me, this augmented matrix right here, this is what you refer to as the standard matrix, the standard matrix of your affine transformation. It's a little bigger than the dimensions of the vector spaces because you need this extra space. <clears throat> so if we look at the example we did before, uh, you'll notice here is the exact same matrix A we had in the previous example. And then here's the same translation vector B. We just added this extra row, all zeros and then a one. Don't panic about, oh no, this system's inconsistent. The line there is for uh, organization purposes. The matrix A is over here and the translation B is right here. We're not trying to solve a system of equation. Um, if you take this standard matrix and you times it by the vector, what did we have earlier? If you have the vector, uh, well, what did we have before? I'm sorry. Um, if we take the vector 2, 0, negative 1, 1, this right here. So we showed, if we, if we take this right here, so we're trying to figure out what happens to this right here. So T, T of 2, 0, negative 1. If you do the matrix multiplication in this situation, um, you end up with the vector 6, negative 4, 13 and 1. I'll let you double check that. Pause the video if you need to. If you look at just the first three vectors, the three first three coordinates there, you end up with 6, negative 4, and 13. So affine transformations can be turned into linear transformations if we enlarge the vector space. And affine transformations are linear transformations plus a translation. So in some respect, affine generalized linear transformations, but linear generalized affine, it's, it's, all, it's neither here nor there. The, the, the two are very closely related to each other. All right, and so to summarize what we've been talking about today, uh, we'll get to this, our, our, our last theorem for this section here, the mazur olam theorem here, which connects the notions of isometries with the orthogonal matrix we saw before. So remember, isometry is a function on a vector space for which distance is preserved. So if a, a map T is an isometry, then it turns out that it can be written as an affine transformation, UX plus B, where B is any vector for translation and U is any orthogonal or unitary matrix. So every isometry is an, orth, is an, is an affine transformation for which you have, are using an orthogonal or a unitary matrix. And so one can then use this idea to characterize isometries for the plane, that is an R2. And it's actually pretty impressive. One can show that in the plane, there's only four types of isometries. One is just translation for which U in that situation just be the identity. Um, there's rotation or rotation around a point in the plane and reflection across a line in the plane. Uh, and if you want to do, we've talked about rotations and reflections in the past. If you want to rotate around the origin, you just take U to be a rotation matrix, which is orthogonal, and you take B to be zero. And if you want to reflect across like the x-axis, you take U to be a, ro a reflection matrix like we did in the past, and then you set B to be zero. If you want to rotate around a point other than the origin or reflect across a line that doesn't go through the origin, you do have to have a translation factor into that. And then the last possibility is there's also something called a glide reflection. Glide, a glide reflection uh, is kind of like you take uh, footprints in the sand. So you get this alternating picture like this. And so a glide reflection is a type of uh, isometry of the plane. This can be done with taking a translation, combining it with a reflection. Uh, 
if the reflection is parallel to the translation, then you can actually conform these collide translations. And it turns out there's only four types of rigid motions of the plane. It gets a little bit complicated the more dimensions you get, uh, because like in three dimensions, you have glide reflections, uh, rotations, regular reflections, translations and such. But you also get things like, like screw translations, that as you can rotate around a translating line, kind of like if you were to put a screw inside of wood and such. And then there's some other interesting things like there. I encourage you to look it up online um, if you want to. It's kind of a fun little topic there. Uh, but that actually concludes section 4.4. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post in the comments below. If you haven't already done so, feel free to subscribe to this channel so you can get further updates about linear algebra and other uh, mathematical lectures that I have here at, at Southern Utah. And if you actually want to take a look at the book, uh, Linear Algebra Done Openly, look at the comments. Uh, there's a link in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye.